So, all right, good morning, Amrita. And uh, good morning. We wish you uh, a very uh, safe period to scroll through. These are uh, very unprecedented times that we are probably seeing. Uh, while I'm saying they are unprecedented, I also say that it's, it's a blessing in disguise for us to adopt to the new news, um, uh, both in industry and in life. And uh, we want to start uh, today's discussion, which would not be a very formal webinar kind of a session wherein uh, the speaker is coming and speaking and sharing his session. Rather, we want to uh, have a session which is more or like a storytelling one. And uh, mm -hmm. as a professor, I, I am always intrigued and happy to see uh, students coming up well in life and uh, becoming successful. Uh, it, it, it is uh, it, uh, introducing you to prestige uh, as an institution also. So PIMR uh, is a 26 year old uh, institution. We are a uh, NAC accredited A institution twice and we are an autonomous institution also. And the Department of Law started its journey in 2015. And we proudly say that uh, our core strength lies in, in, the, uh, in the diversity of faculties we have all coming from uh, major national law universities or from uh, universities of high repute from uh, internationally. Our faculties are doing good quality research. Our students are also participating in major uh, national level events, which are important to a law student. We are trying to give them the complete environment, a 360 degree environment that's needed to produce uh, the modern age lawyers, uh, as we say. And law as a stream has also transcended uh, from uh, just a degree to a very, very powerful professional degree, the, uh, which is now challenging the other uh, uh, educational fields as a major choice of students mm. uh, also. We can very well see what's happening uh, in CLAT uh, from merely 15,000 to about 18,000 students. Lag. CLAT has, uh, CLAT has traveled a journey of close to 60,000 student, uh, students today trying to participate in the examination and fighting for a seat in one of these coveted uh, national level institutions. And uh, this brings me uh, to a very interesting thing, uh, which, which I, would, I, would, I would like to uh, ask you. You are both an advocate and uh, you are a company secretary also by profession. And uh, you uh, you chose uh, advocacy uh, you chose advocacy over uh, the company secretaryship, uh, but I think you are in the corporate litigation, so so your company secretary uh, profile is of very high value. Uh, the uh, basic. Your and voice your is breaking. Views on internship and their importance to law students. Pardon, Amrita, can you your hear? voice is breaking? All right. Amrita, can yes. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. It's clear. So, so my question uh, to begin with uh, you was that you have transcended on a path of success um, and your success is uh, your successful law career. Looking back, what will be your views on internship and their importance to a law student? Uh, okay, so I wouldn't say successful as of yet, uh, but it definitely is part that I'm happy with, okay? So to talk about the importance of internships, uh, importance of internships is absolutely unparalleled. And I'm of the opinion that every student should have their hands on uh, experience, no matter how complex or simple that is. 
mainly because it adds up to your education so looking back at my internships i would say i've had one of the best experiences and not only work wise but otherwise also and that has uh, definitely made a very indis- and now it forms an indispensable part of my comprehensive education as such so internship per se is not only valuable for a law student for, but for every field of uh, work or every field of profession otherwise but uh, going specifically to the importance of intern legal internship i think me and you mr joshi as well you would definitely agree that the five years a student spends in a law school the five years of the youth life would be rendered completely useless if they do not have if the student does not know what is it is out there in the practical world or uh, to put it more correctly how things run practically so for me internship is more about experimental learning uh, i'll just give an example of say two students a student who has had no internship experience due, due throughout their five years of law school and another where a student has had decent number or probably an advocate number of internship experiences here we have a student who right after the law school without any internship experiences enter into the professional field entering in the professional field there are various different kinds of laws he is probably spending 6 months or one year probably more than that only to realize where his interest or area of interest lies but here on another side where we have a student who have interned right from the start till the 5 years of law school he probably would have realized that where his interest area of interest lies so here he is actually saving on those additional one year or two years of uh, life right after law school only because he has had advocate number of internships during the five years okay so and then again secondly i think uh, when we talk about experimental learning i am actually naming internship experimental learning only because uh, a student without any experience of as such of internship during his law school does not know what is the uh, how does the court function or what is the function uh, what is the functions that we expect right after the law school okay so probably the school the law school or the academic curriculum will only teach you the hierarchies of the court like they have a trial court and a district court and magistrate and so on and so forth but they would not tell you whether uh, the requirements of filing a petition whether this court requires a4 size paper or a specific green legal sheet printed only on one side or an a4 size uh, paper printed on both sides of the petition but when you're interning at a place and probably in your various internships if you were an intern in a, um, under an advocate or in a law firm for that matter or whatsoever you would actually know this basics so here you are stepping you're getting to know the basics re- during your college years or during your law school rather than waiting to learn right after your law school because again you will be spending quite amount of time and ample amount of time only to learn those so you will be again saving a few number of years because of the experience you have already had in your 5 years of law school and i think thirdly and most importantly what internship does is internship actually brings about an um it inculcates a sense of discipline as i would say a sense of professionalism which will definitely be missing in this student who has not interned throughout the law school why because professionalism and professional ethics probably were just taught as a subject in our college curriculum or academic curriculum but you not have a practical hang of it which is probably possible for this student because this person who has been disciplined by the professionalism that he has interned under various professionals or interned under various uh, firms or corporate uh, side in that matter will probably on a better standing than this student so i think you, there's a lot of advantage for the students also so when you talk about internship and this importance i think the inter- entire importance lies only in the experimental learning as we call it and your education cannot be completed and if i could specifically say it cannot specifically be com- completed only through theoretical knowledge that we have in the law school but also practical experience should be mandatory and it is actually mandatory by the bar council of india also providing for 20 weeks of internship for a 5 year law course and say 12 weeks for a 3 year law course the only reason it's mandatory is because you need to have the practical experiences and i think that's where the importance lies so i think to sum up about the importance of internship i would say that uh, one a student should volunteer to for as much as of experimental learning during the entire uh, course of a law career entire law school life 
and uh, so if i would also add one of my favorite quote which says volunteer for the toughest projects in your early career so I, and by early career i actually mean that early stage of the law school the first year itself start from the very beginning because there you would know at least till the third year you would be experimenting with a lot of different fields of law so by third year you are sure about what interest you or what is the area of interest that you might be interested in the future so you are very clear or very particular about the field of law that you would be choosing because when you go to the practical world there is a thousand fields of law lying out there so you are actually having more of experience than compared to the other students who have not so to just wind up the importance of internship yes it adds up your theoretical knowledge but uh, it also boosts your confidence and like i said it inculcates a sense of discipline which obviously puts in a better standing than the others i i totally agree to you uh, because these are some of the facts that even other professional courses across uh, the exactly. educational sphere have also uh, the reason why an internship is done but slowly uh, we are feeling that students uh, who are joining professional programs as early as uh, after their class 12 are not very well aware of uh, these facts and and the idea of professionalism ethical professionalism and uh, discipline uh, comes in a little later and you can understand a 17 uh, year old Correct. child versus a 24 year old person yeah. there's a little bit of a difference but this brings uh, uh, so if i could actually yeah if i could actually answer to that so when the only reason right after 12 counting only the 18 years old so now the entire law school or the law career is not only restricted to litigation law we have various ngos coming up there are various administrative provisions a governmental department so when i say internship does not mean that you're only restricting the 18 year old right in the first school uh, first year of law school to enter into the legal world per se but you know by internship you not only be restricted to the legal field in the first year explore yourself to a different surrounding all together probably by having a little bit of legal knowledge because we have various governmental departmental governmental departments and you have various ngos for that matter because uh, at least there you will start learning discipline and professionalism in the other way so by professional ethics does not only come to you later stage but you start developing uh, the nature of the professionalism right from the start so i think this is why it's very important to start from the beginning because after first year you would realize the punctuality that matters even from the punctuality this is different how it works in a law college but it is different how it works in a working environment all together if you are working for an ngo it will be very different so problem ngo which is dealing with some legal aspects for all together because now we have various policy centers coming up various other things and they actually require students right from the course itself to help them research in various legal fields so i think anyone can take up those fields rather than just sitting idle for the first year at least so start from the very beginning is what i want to put across you coined a very uh, very interesting word experiential education now experience learning yes think that the government is also pushing the the be it bci be it uh, mhrd be it ugc be it the government central policy is now towards experiential education so we we in the department have also pushed it hard and we are we are trying that our students get internship uh, as early as in their uh, first year mm, curriculum yeah of the first semester they should at least have their first uh, internship but um, while i say this uh, it's it's a little difficult for us to sometimes explain the students the uh, the importance of uh, of internship which you have beautifully explained and i think students who are listening to this would understand this but i have a question when you were uh, you were back a first year uh, first semester student how were you planning your internships okay What? so <laughs> yeah so like every student for that matter even when i joined the professional field myself i was of the opinion that yes let's uh, i was actually never swayed by the big names or the big talks about the law firms that we have it for me it was always about the learning from the very start because me being a first generation lawyer myself i was very much told in the beginning that how difficult it will be for me to fetch a good internship and all i was looking for was a good learning experience so whenever i uh, applied for an internship i made sure that the role role that i wanted to work for 
or maybe what I was looking for. So if internship, uh, so if I would not be applying for an internship which I thought would not be useful, like in the very first year of myself, like I said, I myself interned at an NGO. So in a very renowned NGO, for the first semester itself, I know if I would have entered uh, into the legal field or would have even applied for the uh, law firms or for an advocate per se, they wouldn't even be, it wouldn't be a good experience for me because all I was taught in the first semester was probably the law of contracts or the law of torts. So I wouldn't be actually doing justice to the law firm that I would have been interning in, neither I would be doing justice to the time I would spend on my internship experience. So for the first semester, I actually went for an NGO internship and I was lucky enough to intern with a very reputed law for, uh, this a uh, very reputed NGO. And right after that, for the first two semester again, I ensured that I would um, intern with an independent advocate. So I tried approaching them and very, very well in advance. So it was a very organized process right from the start because I was lucky enough to be guided by someone who actually knows how difficult it is to even secure a good internship opportunity. And you do not get an internship opportunity right today when you think of applying and tomorrow you have it in your hand. It's not like, uh, so let's talk about nepotism here again. Nepotism is not only restricted to the film industry that we see it as of today. It's everywhere, even in the law career. When I entered the law school, if I'm interning in an NGO, my batchman would probably interning under a super senior advocate only because normally he belongs to a family background. But that should not demotivate me. And I'm lucky it did not demotivate me because I know it's only the learning that I would look into. And probably the friends or the other people who are actually interning at reputed firms would not have those learning because in the end, it is not the big firm or the big name that matters. It is the learning that matters. So all whenever you're looking at, uh, I will always look at the role that I would be performing and what I could give back to them also, not only to myself. So Amrita, one of the takeaways that you're today giving is to start your internship uh, in the first semester without looking Correct. for a new. And uh, you're suggesting you can start with an NGO to begin with. Correct. Correct. NGOs will require the student to actually spend a more time and get involved into uh, some socially important issues. And I think it builds the mind of uh, the student to actually grab what's around the environment and analyze, because that is Correct. one very important aspect a good lawyer should have, the ability to understand what's around in the environment, grasp it and analyze it. And Correct. I think your thing will give, uh, give it. We are lucky enough at the department that our placement cell is not handled by the regular placement officers. Our, our placement officers are basically faculty cadre. Uh, so our placement officer, the head of the placement cell is a senior assistant professor from HR background. So her PhD is all in psychology and uh, that's managerial psychology and her, her area of expertise is uh, human resource. Then we have our assistant placement as Shubhank. Shubhank has done his LLB, LLM, both from Christ University, Bangalore. As a student, he was probably quite active with the placement cell of the university. Correct. He decided that let, let, let me build my career into uh, law placement, which is a very niche activity, which I feel today. And I think uh, they both are doing justice with the students. Shubank about six months back was uh, explaining me why we should have our first year students going into an NGO. At that point of time, uh, we always uh, had this in our minds that look, we need to have some big names to show, but today uh, you have actually brought in a new perspective uh, to our thought and uh, to our students' thoughts also, that actually you can start slowly by growing with the uh, environment available and NGO will be a good place to start and an easy place to start and then you can jack up, uh, uh, jack up the level slowly. I'm Why? glad Mr. Shubank, you actually have that uh, both of us on the same page when it comes to interning at an NGO. Probably we are the alumni of the same university. And we've actually yeah. been taught from the very start that do not look for the big names or uh, go for a legal internship, at least in the first few internships. So I think we have uh, the only reason probably we're on the same page here. And trust me, it actually works. <laughs> yeah. So um, Amrita, now that you are on the other side of the of the table. You are in a big law firm and um, you uh, you are also partner to the law internships. I think this is Correct. something that was in your mind as a student also, that there yes. is a professional platform helping students to 
at internships. Very uh, important question that actually attracts my mind that uh, we see uh, CVs of students and law students and those CVs will have internship. And when these students apply to a law, uh, an A class law firm like yours, and, and they give the, away their CV, how critically you evaluate the, the internships that they mention and what's the weightage of these internships in the CVs? Okay, I'm glad you actually brought it up. So when, uh, with, when I'm sitting on the other side of the table and when I'm actually sitting through CV, I think before anything, I would just like to put a point or two uh, here across. That here when I'm sitting through CVs, I'm not, uh, before even looking at the institution that the candidate comes from or um, the, uh, the institution that the candidate comes from, what the role of internship person the CV plays for me is that I know that the student knows uh, is uh, basically the desire to learn and probably a passion to that extent. So when I know that a student has interned, forget about the law firms or the big names that have interned under and even the role of institution, the name of the institution. The only thing that they have interned in the first place tells me that they have the student or the candidate has a desire to learn, the passion to learn. So and I think that's very important here because, uh, and when if you look uh, right after your internship, you would realize that the hierarchy of the law schools or uh, even the student GP does not matter. All that matters is how they are able to interpret the law or how they are able to understand the law per se. So it does not depend on the hierarchy of the law firms or the big law firm that I'm interning in. But more importantly, it depends on um, the eagerness to learn here. And secondly, when I'm also looking uh, at the CV, for me, I'm of the opinion that when the student has already interned, uh, the role of internship plays a major role here in the CV because I know that the student has at least basic knowledge of the practical world out there. Like I actually mentioned, internship is all about practicality and the experimental learning. So sitting through CVs, whereas so two important takeaways here. The only thing I, when sitting through CVs, would actually look at this the desire to learn and the eagerness to learn that this candidate possess, keeping aside the institution that they come from or keeping aside whether they have interned in this big law firms or the other big names as a such. And secondly, that they know bit or have a basic knowledge about the practical world out there. So I think all this plays a major role for me when I am looking through CVs or, you know, sitting through CVs. And uh, just to tell the students or tell the viewers here, I tell you, do not look uh, look at the, what role you want to actually go for, what role you want to intern for. And in your CVs, make sure do not only mention the names of the firms that you uh, interned in. For me, because it does not really matter for me. At least for me, it doesn't. What matters the role that you have played? Have a brief description of the work that you have performed through your internship. You know, have a, tell me that you visited courts, tell me that, you know, you have helped in the drafting of legal notices or petitions or, you know, application for a trademark. So that way I would know that the student has a basic knowledge of all these criteria, of all this knowledge, which is actually not, which is not taught to us during a law school. The theoretical knowledge does not provide us that. It only provides us the laws. It does not tell us which website to refer to and where to file an application. So I think more importantly, rather than looking for the names that you've interned, the CVs should actually highlight the specific work or the role that you performed in that internship. Basically what you have learned from that internship. So, and more likely, I think everyone now, the, the gone are the days when, you know, the big names will actually play a role. The only thing that matters now uh, is the role that you could perform and the experiments or uh, the experience that you've had. So I think that plays a major role here. Uh, very well said. Very well said, uh, Amrita. It's it's good to understand uh, valuing voice, val valuing yeah. the talent. Yeah. So so the industry is actually valuing talent uh, more than uh, more than the brands uh, are associated. Yeah, but certainly they must be playing a role uh, in the initial screening process. Uh, in in uh, sir, uh, sorry to interrupt. In continuous uh, continuation with this answer, I wanted to ask, what is the importance of cover letter? I mean, uh, yeah, oh, so, yes, you know, correct. Usually, ask uh, send cover letter along with the CV. So, what is the importance of that cover letter? Yeah. 
see uh, for me i actually give more weightage to the cow like you asked me now i would tell you if i am sitting to a series more than the series i would actually give more importance to the cover letter here why because series only reflecting your say the college that you have attended or the school that you have attended and the percentage you have secured or the internships you have had but your cover letter tells me that the passion or the role that you want to engage into your area of interest and what is it that you actually are looking for through this internship so it tells it gives me a vibe of what you actually want to learn or probably what i can expect out of you so i think cover letter a very good drafted cover letter plays a major role in securing a good internship opportunity because again yet like i told you cv only tells you what you have done till date it does not tell you what you expect to do in the future and which can only be highlighted to a good cover letter so amrita that uh, why you were saying that uh, it's important to plan your uh, career quite well in advance in a five year degree course certainly you get a lot of opportunities where you can plan yourself now while saying is very simple we actually want to know that uh, what a student must look while choosing an internship okay so like i have already mentioned when i'm looking for internship when i had look for internship myself look for the role that you wish to play and the, about planning of your career your career right after your law school it does not necessarily so there's a smooth transition in everyone's life so when i talk about transition it could be smooth for someone difficult for someone or somewhere in between so it's not the smooth transition for everyone so when i'm looking uh, about what i expect to do or how i'm planning my career in the first two years of your law school you can actually try dif- uh, have your hands on different fields of law all together work in different fields where you would know that what interests you so by the third year probably the starting of fourth year you know probably this will interest me and if you think that you have the opinion that yes this will interest me for the next uh, internship also try getting or securing a role in the same field so you would be very confident about probably you want to take your career in this uh, so you know right from the very start explo- i am not asking anyone to just stick to one role from the first few years try different fields because someone could be very interested in litigating but someone might not even enjoy that but for the other person probably he wants to become a professor or probably enter the corporate world altogether or just become an in-house counsel so try uh, putting your feet every field of law different field of aspects that you consider and then choose wisely so i would say choose wisely but choose quality okay so that's what it is about planning your career in a way that will make you happy because right after the law school you are ended up in a career or ended up in the field which does not even interest you so what was the whole point of the five years of your law school when you are not even happy with the work that you are doing and law course is a beautiful career but uh, you should actually plan it in such a way that you do not uh, end up screwing up your life right after your law school so i think that Uh, how you should go ahead with the planning another, another important take that i i probably have captured out of your discussion is that it's better to plan than to cry later correct <laughs> planning is what you like the most and you will know it only after you have done certain number of internships correct so uh, so going beyond this now law as a field has a unique challenge and this challenge has got created because of the over the years of uh practice that has uh, happened in india specifically in india now we uh, uh, the the lawyers want interns they want juniors to work with them but they don't want to share the cake and this brings a very very interesting point now that law has become as a educational subject also highly professional and in demand and uh, majority of the times uh, we see on a certain degree of parameters that law students are competing with the mba pass out students or uh, in some cases uh, uh, the liberal art graduates uh, also specifically in the area of uh, public administration we find law students competing and uh, there is a there is a notion that a student sometimes is not able to ask uh, Uh, the the expert who has come in and uh, and is uh, is actually delivering a lecture on 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 such an 
important and uh, technical subject but uh, i would be i would want to be feeling free to ask what is your consideration a paid internship or an unpaid internship okay so i think there is nothing there is nothing right or wrong in this question like a, a paid or an unpaid internship like a good internship opportunity and which pays you then obviously i've hit the jackpot right like mean, nothing could be better than that but again i would say never and never let go of an internship opportunity that does not pay you because like i said i have always been of the opinion it is the role and the learning that you would be performing so later right after your college you won't remember whether that internship experience has paid you or not but what would you remember is that they have actually had so much of learning impact on you okay but again uh, me personally i'm of the opinion that yes hard work and effort should actually be rewarded but again it depends on the norms that the organization follows and i think in india we are not there as of yet that uh, we are following a norm of paid internship as such it depends on the policy to policy of every organization per se but again when you're looking for learning and i think payment could come throughout your life so but obviously the paid internship is this it's very lucrative i would say especially for a college going student but again i think do not restrict yourself only for the paid internship because uh, that's why uh, like i'm telling you the payment could be come in the later period of your life what you look for is the role and the experience and the learning that you will be grab out of that internship opportunity so again yes i think that should be a norm for the paid internship but in india we are not there yet uh, let's just not restrict ourselves to the paid internship we should obviously have a more uh, basic uh, explore different fields and probably different fields might not even give different payment or compensation or consideration for that matter and pro- and uh, hard work will be rewarded probably may not in your uh, payment way or your consideration but it will be rewarded in the future and you would know that yes your hard work and your effort was rewarded the law firms and other i think are coming up with a lot of uh, experiences where they publish uh, research articles of the students nowadays especially when the world has come to a halt right now they actually publish the articles so if you are not getting paid for your hard work or research but when you you are associated with a law firm and your article or your research work has been published so i think that's so much better than a paid consideration right so do not only look for the payment here but look for the experience here so yes but again yes payments are lucrative <laughs> so um, so just um, summing up what you were trying to say if i am not wrong that uh, paid internships are good non paid internships are not bad correct uh, i think you are trying to refer that choose an organization which acknowledges your efforts correct and a public acknowledgement is far better than getting paid yeah so then and uh, yeah not only acknowledges your work so there are only few organizations again who acknowledge your work publicly but it is the learning also sometimes like i told you after your five years of law school you wouldn't remember about whether there was acknowledgement or payment also what you will remember is the learning that you have had so assessing the co uh, assessing the advocates in the course it says probably a work won't be acknowledged by an advocate ki yes this intern has come and assisted me in the course but what matters for you is that the learning that you have learned throughout the uh, through assessing the advocate in the course so acknowledgement also may not be public as of such but uh, it is the learning again that matters but yes if you are getting paid and getting acknowledged like nothing beats that but that's not should not should not only be the criteria the main criteria is the learning that we are talking about here fine fine um i'll i'll just digress from our current topic and uh, it was interesting to know that uh, you are partnering law internships uh, as in uh, as an organization which is now uh, helping uh, thousands of law graduates across the country to help secure an internship on the lines and thought process that you are uh, trying to tell us um, i would wish to know the journey and inspiration behind setting up of the law internships uh, so like i told you from the initial stage itself uh, it was very difficult for me to even grab an internship opportunity though i have been interning from my first semester itself 
but being a first generation lawyer i know how difficult it was and even today say we a law school has a thousand students a batch okay so thousand students thousand students securing a thousand internship is probably next to impossible until unless they are very good or excellent in their curriculum but what we want is to have a good learning we want the experience to convert uh, the academic to convert into good experience so we at law internship where we wanted to start considering me and my uh, partner co partner there's an opinion that yes we have actually suffered and had gone through various difficulties in securing a good opportunity now since we are at a stand when we can give back to the society and probably give back to our fellow students why not make it a platform where we can give back and by this platform we connect the law firms and various organizations for that matter with the law students who are not able to secure an internship opportunity so we act like a mediator probably joining them between the, joining the law firms and the students because in the end all we want is them, them to have a good experience which probably we have had but only because not no only because other students might not have and what we want to give back to the society now is the experimental learning as we call it the internship and that could be possible through our platform because there are various students out there who are probably are not able to secure an internship we want to reach out to those students who are not able to have the experimental learning so that we can provide them a platform because we know how important this is now since we are already in our professional path and we are already going through the course and arguing matters and meeting various clients we know how those internship extra in, internship could have been so much important to us so much useful so by law internship and by organization we tend to provide this usefulness to every student so this is the whole objective that we have formed the organization for because we know how important the internships are and how difficult it actually becomes also to secure a good internship opportunity because i think let's face it every year we have numerous number of law colleges coming up and by the uh, criteria the minimum criteria set of internship set by the bar council also not every student is able to secure that internship or probably are not able to even complete those internships the minimum criteria of 20 weeks or 12 weeks so it's more to reach out to those students who are not able to secure because in the end it is a learning and when i am being a professional i want my students or probably my um, associates to come up to the code with a good experience not like a first and experience but more like that they have already experienced in the internship so this is what i want to give out and this is what law and township actually wants to give out provide a platform for everyone who cannot do it themselves uh, we wish you all the success i think we our so um, uh, taking the help of law internships uh, currently and i That's hope that beautiful <laughs> if, uh, department of law pimr as an institution which is uh, which is not uh, leaving their students uh, to the mercy of uh, their own ways and means of internship yes. we are actually yes. that yes. correct our platform is op- open to the pmr students they can any time come to us apply for an internship and we assure them to connect to the best organization possible as per the area of interest because the whole objective here is to give out to the students so i think uh, actually we can uh, go ahead with the students also who are viewers who can come to us and if you are struggling or facing difficulties will be really happy to help with them amrita uh, what is your take on uh, 2020 and beyond looking at the current scene and the future ahead in the job and internship market with specific reference to the law field um so if i keep the law field aside also for now we know how the pandemic has hit every one of us and not just the law field but for every field for that matter how the economy has gone down how everyone suffering their jobs losing jobs and they have been laid off so and uh, that the same thing has happened in the law field also especially to this graduates the 2020 graduates who are probably just graduated with a feel or in a career they probably won't know where they'll be lay, uh, going ahead in this probably in the next 6 months or 1 year so the pandemic has obviously affected the law students also especially the fresh graduates here but uh, like for with specific reference to the internships and i'm not touching the job aspect as of now 
with specific reference to the internships i think uh, various organization the law firms and the government organizations and various others uh, also have come up with the uh, option of virtual internship opportunity because there are the opinion that here because of this pandemic also the experience should not be sacrificed so the those virtual internship opportunity again it's a very beautiful uh, concept that we have come up with because in the end it's not only the theoretical knowledge that matters so because of this pandemic because it has hit us so hard the through a virtual internship opportunity the students are actually connecting with various uh, professionals virtually because the work from home culture has become the new norm right so the similar way it is also helping the students to work from home and research and associate the professionals sitting right at their home because you never know probably 6 months or 7 months or probably a year down the line the physical internships will not resume none even the advocates we have switched to virtual courts like till yesterday in bangalore the virtual uh, the civil court was working the mclt now it is actually closed down again so the virtual courts are also the new norm but you cannot uh, expect the student to uh, attend the virtual courts but obviously you can expect the student to apply for such internship opportunity virtually but it will be assisted uh, so yes the job market has obviously hit especially for the 2020 fresh law graduates but uh, i think for the 2020 graduates also what you could look up is rather than keeping the job aside you can apply for an internship opportunity rather even after your college days because that way you'll actually be learning and experience because right now i think uh, very few uh, organizations are actually considering any applicant also like a job applicant per se so rather rather than wasting or sitting idle or uh, probably be blaming yourself for the pandemic make it useful and go ahead with all these opportunities that are available in the market right now so virtually internships are the new norms and i think okay. they are going to stay there for uh, much longer um, we as an institution are blessed with the fact that our students have actually been able to do the virtual internships they were early in the uh, curve so uh, a lot of them got those opportunities and we were blessed they were not uh, wiling off their time here and there and now that we have got your support also uh, we can be rest assured that uh, we are a bit pandemic proof as of now <laughs> uh, but, uh, but but it's it's very interesting law law as a field has unfolded and so has the government made a lot of changes in the legal frameworks uh, old laws being scrapped new laws being implemented uh some new practices uh, seen i i told pandemic uh, is actually a boon to the system because now we are more technology driven um, so virtual courts a couple of years back was a big no no but now the virtual courts are the time of the day and and even supreme court is uh, following the norm Correct. under these circumstances what in your view are the top upcoming areas in the legal field that the student should be well aware about should uh, receive the training and should strive to learn more on that area uh so being a corporate advocate myself i would say corporate law is obviously here to stay but okay keeping that aside uh, so you have uh, data protection and privacy laws so i think this is one of the growing fields of the r mainly because uh, let's go back to 2016 when uh, the aadhar card issue came up and people were actually not very okay with sharing the confidential information their privacy was said to be violated and up to very recently in the 2020 talking about the arogya setu app also where there were a lot of use and cries about sharing or violating the privacy or the confidentiality of an individual or a citizen of india so i think data protection and privacy laws are gaining importance and in the long run it is going to be the talk of the society because that's very important here and again uh, moving to then we have media and entertainment law again so now you see due especially during the pandemic like you mentioned we are all sitting way back at home so we have movies and series just a click away at the fingertips and but how are all those movies and the series and the other things that we watch online or the media are protected there are various ip infringement taking place various copyright issues so i think uh, even this media and entertainment law is taking a huge uh, turn a huge step 
because the media lawyers are actually worshipped right now at this current stage and probably in the future there's going to be huge demand for such media and entertainment lawyers also and which we actually have very few in our in, in our country and then uh, to keeping we also have the cyber law cyber law again is a very growing field because of the cyber terrorism and cyber attacks that we have one or layman does not know whether writing any abusive statement to someone over a cell phone or a whatsapp message is actually a crime but it is but a layman do not know that so now people are becoming aware of all this cyber crimes also so it is again the new law that is coming up and uh, various demands are in the future so keeping aside the traditional civil and the criminal uh, laws that were actually there to stay i think this laws the media and entertainment law data and privacy law cyber law and i think competition law also for that matter all these are the trending laws and will have a huge impact in the future so as a student if you are actually taking up and this interests you i think one student should actually go ahead with this field of law because it's the upcoming and the most developing fields as of today considering when the 20th century and 2020 i think this laws are developing so if you if a student intends to have an interest try uh, and it inter- the entertainment interests you the media interests you so student should actually look at the laws governing those media governing those entertainment so that way you know you will be probably after your law school you will be stepping in the field which is very much in demand so that way you will be giving out to the society with the demand and also be giving out to yourself because you have an interest to it that's great to understand that uh, that you have uh, you have given out some areas like data protection and uh, privacy laws media laws cyber law um, i think uh, insolvency and bankruptcies uh, code is another area uh, which is fast developing yeah fast developing yeah again to talk about uh, i'll just stick to uh, toxins now since you mentioned idc uh i'll tell you how internships also plays a very important role here because way back in my college we knew that the winding up we taught laws and regulations which are specifically in the act the rules the regulation the section the proviso so in the companies that like, we read about the winding up provisions way back in my college days but when i enter the practical world i realize that the winding up is actually regulated by the idc here which i wasn't taught back in my college days so again this is where the internship plays a major role because uh, the schools or the colleges probably only teach us what's in the law they won't tell us the various notifications and the various rules and regulations and the upcoming because that because our course curriculum is framed at the starting of the year and notifications keep coming and keep changing so you know to also know about the various laws that have changed and what is the current scenario or probably what is the stage now internships again play a very important role here and uh, about the importance of ibc i'm not very sure how much it's going to take ahead because for the for the next 6 months again ibc is suspended for any new cases so for the pandemic again uh, ibc as of now it's not actually playing a great role <laughs> this brings us to a very uh, philosophical question which has a great uh, reality attached to it yeah. what are, what is your take on the myths versus reality of the profession okay uh, so myths versus reality uh, what what are myths myths are basically what we have been keep hearing from times and again or what our ancestors have told you or probably what our parents have told us so like uh, there is a myth i will tell you about the, in the legal profession specifically when sir you have to put in the most number of hours 15 to 16 hours straight for the first two to three years of your law career if you want to be successful but according to me counseling i had a smooth transition and very of my colleagues also which i see it's not the number of hours that matters it is the quality that matter and here again i would again stress on the internship because probably we have had good experience of the internship in the first 5 years of school that i am not spending so much of time working uh, say probably 15 hours a day so it's a, there's a myth that you will have to put on so many hours to achieve what what you actually want to achieve it's totally a myth balance your life in such a way from the first year of college itself so that you know you go, do away with such myth so the reality is the only the quality matters so you only choose wisely and choose the quality so i think that's the reality of the profession here and uh, 
I think, yeah, I think that's about it. The reality is very much different from what is portrayed in, say, the series Suits. It's not how it works in Suits or not how Harvest Spectre goes in Pheasants Escape. It's very much different in the Indian court specifically. So just because the lewd of, uh, you know, all the signs are very interesting, it's not how actually it works in the reality. It also does not work like how we have an Indian movie called Jolly LLB. It does not even work like that. There are two different aspects. We have two here, which tempts you to enter the law field, and then you have this Bollywood movie here, which tells you, "Oh my God, let's not enter this field." It's not either of the two. It's somewhere in between. So the reality is never portrayed, and it's very different. So I think we should um, forget about the myths and to know what are the myths. Enter into this profession right from the very start. Your internship days itself. So now that the myth uh, has been broken. and uh, we are seeing uh, jolly llp with the eyes of reality there is a pertinent question that comes into my mind and that is court of law versus working as a corporate attorney what's your take okay so uh, i wouldn't say that one has to choose specifically when we are the viewers are the law students here one should never choose between a court of law or a co- or, or a corporate attorney something could be lucrative or interesting for one but interesting the other could be interesting for the other but again here uh, when me as a corporate advocate i have not restricted myself to only court of law or to a corporate attorney at points i am also working for the client day in and day out and helping them in planning their structures which is more work of a corporate attorney here but also i am visiting the various tribunals and arguing before the court because probably in the initial phase in the initial stage of my law career i was only told that the entire work of a lawyer is to go before the court present the cases and that's always been in the back of my mind so i think one should not choose between the two but if you are given an opportunity i think grab an opportunity where you never uh, put yourself out from the court of law because i think that's a beautiful world out there because you know you are getting to be you are given the chance to be heard but again corporate attorney also it's a beautiful world again and also like you mentioned about the paid and the unpaid internship the corporate attorney are obviously beautifully paid so you know have a balance of both because it's just a taste of life so never choose between the two but uh, have a balance of, of both but also now we have judiciary and civil services and all of it coming up so i think it just changes from person to person so yes but never choose between the two have a balance of both uh it it actually did not struck us that uh, we we have spent uh, very close to an hour and it oh. was a day with you but uh, and and we this discussion can go on and on because uh, we are a lot exactly. but hundreds of questions that come into our mind but before before opening the house for the students there is one question i want to ask what is your take and your uh, your views on a dream internship uh so dream internship so like i said from the first from the initially before entering the field all of us dream of probably interning at when i was in the law school i have dreamt of interning at oh my god i want to intern at the mr ram jethmalani when he was in my college so everyone dreams of something or the other but again like i said you should never sway yourself from this big names or the big uh, talks about anything else because your dream as per se in the future is to become like mr ram jethmalani okay so only to reach there all you require is the learning and the experience that matters so dream to have the best learning experience dream to give out to the society have a dream to take back from the society have the best uh, experience that you can so i think dream and township should be about the role that you want to bestow yourself upon so dream about the good role that you will be performing dream about the learning experience that you would have so i think that should uh, actually be your dream and township per se but obviously all this the dream and township in the end for every student especially for the students in the first year or the second year goes up to interning at such and such firms or such and such big names 
but uh, in at the end of the day you would realize the dream was actually not a dream the dream was only to have a good role in the first place so but yes never fall back behind your dream and obviously keep a standard for yourself like what are dreams you want to achieve something so have a standard have a norm for yourself that yes i want to achieve this i dream of reaching here so but how do you reach here to reach here you have to go to various struggles and difficulties so make sure your role is so beautifully planned that you achieve your dream so this is where your dream internship should also land you to very very beautifully uh, narrated of a dream internship it was an uh, exhaustive and enlightening session uh, even for me um, uh, because uh, uh, law internship and law placement uh, is still mystical and um, there are no standard form forms and you said uh, there are no brands that the lawyer is looking at is looking at the quality he's looking at the perseverance he's looking at a person's ability to do hard work how he has shaped his career and so far um i i will i will take the liberty of opening the house for for 5 minutes for students to ask questions and um, uh, certainly shubham can also ask a question on behalf of the students to you so any student who has got any question can raise hand i, I will allow him to talk uh, freely to uh, advocate amrita anybody has any question i must uh, i must admit amrita the 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 quite an informal discussion between uh, us actually uh, brought about a lot of knowledge and probably would have uh, cleared a lot of doubts amongst uh, amongst the student uh, still uh, these 2 3 minutes we are opening up that if if some point that the student still has a doubt uh, uh, he or she can ask Uh, one question that a student will certainly ask you is madam would we get an internship uh, in your firm <laughs> so we like we obviously have a procedure of applying for internship but like we said when you screen like you also ask me what happens when i'm sitting to enter cv you apply to our firm we'll sit to your cv we'll see how what is the role or what is that you want to achieve out of this internship and if we think that yes you actually want to learn and not only come to us only for the sake of a certificate that you have worked for singania and co but the desire and the passion to learn then obviously you would get a chance in turn with us and i love taking students and guiding them thank you so much uh, shubham do you have any questions to uh, be put up no sir no sir. so uh, amrit the word by you thank you <laughs> i will take this opportunity to thank you we have actually uh, we have actually consumed close to an hour of your time and uh, you being belonging to a big law firm uh, hours are built and which is <laughs> a myth and uh, and so your, that's not a myth that's correct <laughs> so uh, so your perseverance hard work early planning has brought you to this stage we wish you all the luck and we wish you see growing we also wish you luck for the law internship it's an absolutely novel uh, idea and we want, we wish see it growing along with us and um, we wish that some of our students can qualify your criteria and uh, probably we <laughs> also have a couple of amritas amongst our students uh, thank you to you so much uh, for joining us and we wish to see you back in the uh, institute whenever things are free and open and you can travel please have uh, our invitations to you is open thank you so much for joining i will wind up the session now thank you so much mr nishant <laughs>